Cincinnati Bearcats got Satterfield wrapping up spring. If we want to know about Cincinnati, Chad Brendel, BearcatJournal.com is who we go to, and he joins us now on 365 Sports. Chad, thanks for your time. What questions did they absolutely need to answer, and which ones did they? I think the two main ones were quarterback, and I think they did. Uh, I think Brendan Soresby, the the transfer from Indiana, Texas boy. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you guys have some love for, for Brendan Soresby, but – he came in and looked really good consistently throughout the spring. He throws a, a consistent ball. He's good in the pocket. He's got some maneuverability. He can push it down the field. But more importantly for this Cincinnati offense, he can make throws in the intermediate and short range. He was really good this spring on leading guys on swing passes and uh, screens and and things out in the flat where they just couldn't get any productivity there last year. Um, so I think, you know, offensively Soresby was, was definitely the revelation. It, look, you can't be good in college football if you're bad at quarterback. Mm. Cincinnati was bad at quarterback last year and the record showed it, uh, defensively it's, it's, you know, the, the conversation is pretty much strictly about this switch essentially to Iowa state's defense. They hired Iowa state's longtime linebackers coach Tyson bite. Um, they are going to that three safety look that Iowa state has used with great success defensively over the past six, seven years. It's uh, it's an adjustment. It's taking some time, but it's a really fascinating defense. And I've enjoyed getting to kind of learn and understand and, and get a grasp on why it's so effective. And uh, the, the safety spot is the key there. Uh, they were bad, bad, bad at safety last year. They brought in uh, six, seven new safeties. Um, <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's a lot of one position in one offseason. And uh, they, they looked much improved. They're longer. They're more athletic. Um, so but those are kind of the two main things. Last year was, I mean, two different things. One, they're going to a new conference, and two, they have a new head coach. So had they been good, it would have kind of been – maybe even nobody would have known why that would have happened. Uh, you know, of course, bringing in Emory Jones at quarterback and his third school and all the different changes that, that he went through. How much more of, of a fresh start does this year feel like as opposed to maybe last year, which had just so many moving parts to it? Yeah, I think, you know, you're so desperate to keep everything together and, and you don't have the inside knowledge of guys that maybe aren't fits and are fits and who fits where and who are leaders and, you know, who are energy givers and who are energy takers uh, from the previous staff. And, and I think that kind of played itself out uh, pretty aggressively last year. This year, it feels like there's a lot more established, uh, you know, kind of the, the hierarchy of the locker room seems to be a lot healthier, a lot more established, a lot more uh, rowing in the same direction as the coaching staff. And that's hard, especially when you're replacing a guy like Luke Fickle, who was such a commanding president, such a big personality. He leaves. Guess what? There are, there are going to be some people that are still on kind of his side, quote unquote, if you will. And it takes some time to 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 work through all that. And I think that's uh, that's what they've done at this point. Chad, do you believe Dante Corleone will get back to uh, his All-American type levels in 2024? I, I do. Um, there were some things last year that I think that that staff wanted to accomplish defensively that they maybe didn't have, you know, Dante wasn't the right personnel for. You have a, a mountain of a human at defensive tackle and they used him on a lot of stunts and twists and things that required speed. That's not his game. His game is win the point of attack and take the guy that's in front of him and shove him seven yards into the backfield because he's stronger than that guy. <laughs> right. And, you know, this defense appears to be a little bit more designed to allow him to pin his ears back and get upfield as opposed to playing sideways and and not playing into his strengths. So uh, did I notice that, and, and everybody, well, not everybody, but most programs like to bring the former players back, but I saw some shots of some former players coming back. Was that something emphasized even more 
in year two with Satterfield now that they know him a little bit better too? Uh, sure. They, they also, so it was kind of a, it was a crazy weekend at Cincinnati. I don't know if you guys saw or not. Yeah, but I Travis did. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Travis and Jason Kelsey did their, their new Heights podcast on Thursday at fifth third arena. There was a ton of guys that came back for that. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then every year leading into the spring game on Friday, they have their alumni golf outing. So they had 200 guys back for that. And then the morning of the spring game every year, they have the champion or the, the captain's breakfast, which if you've ever been a captain for University of Cincinnati football, you get invited to the captain's breakfast. So it was kind of a perfect storm of all of these guys were back connected to a couple of these different events. And it just turned into kind of the, the who's who of Cincinnati football. I mean, it, you, you saw the picture, I'm sure, that UC tweeted out. Like, Jason Kelsey standing there talking to Sauce Gardner. There's not a lot of places that can put that picture out into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is something that is pretty common in terms of with the golf outing and the captain's breakfast. There are always a lot of guys back in town for the spring game. But when you add in the Kelsey's coming back and everything that goes along with that, it was – bigger than normal. And uh, I'm sure Scott Satterfield was very happy to not, they didn't have to do a whole lot. It was just, they put the bat signal out and everybody arrived. Did you, I know that you uh, are close with Jason, right? Did you yes. get to see him and talk to him? We did. Uh, so my daughter is named after Jason. Yep. Uh, she will tell you she's named after Travis because Travis is the hot one. <laughs> but as I tell her, <laughs> She was born in 2010, and Travis sucked in 2010. He was suspended. <laughs> he didn't play football. Why would I name her after that guy? Um, so, yeah, I did get to see Jason and chat with him for a little bit. Uh, he is he is every bit as genuine and a good dude as he seems from the outside. Um, he saw my daughter for the first time, and Kelsey and gave her a big hug. And it's been – you know, been – back and forth trying to meet each other for 13 years. Um, he was like that with every fan that came up and looked for an autograph or a picture. He's just an awesome, awesome human. Chad, uh, now that, you know, we're getting to the end of the spring sports here, the end of this first year in the Big 12, uh, what have been your overall thoughts seeing just, to, you know, we've had basketball come and go, football come and go. What have been your impressions of just maybe some of the things that have stood out and maybe what are some of the things that, uh, you know, Cincinnati fans have wrapped their heads around about, you know, what year two needs to look like, how you can get there, so on and so forth? I, I think, one, there's, there's definitely for fans a learning curve of, oh, man, the depth is really what's different. Um, it's it's not that difficult. I mean, it is, but it's not that difficult to have frontline guys, you know, six, seven, eight top of the roster guys that look like all the rest of the guys in the league. But I think what the learning curve, especially in football was, was man, every team basically has these guys one through like 60, one through 70. Sure, there's developmental guys on the back end of the roster, but the top two thirds of every roster is ready pretty much to contribute in the league. I think the other thing that, that was learned is there's not a lot of separation in this mm, league. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of really good coaching, but especially now with, with Texas and Oklahoma exiting, uh, I think we're going to see even more of the volatile swings from one year to the next, where one year you win your close games and you have a great year. The next year you lose a couple of those close games and you're hovering around six and six or seven and five. I think that, and then basketball, my goodness. Yeah, what'd you think? What a, my, it was so awesome. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think you guys understand what going through a decade, having to cover the American is like. Because you don't want to watch the games. Like, you know, if I've got a, a, a night free, a Thursday night free, do I really want to sit down and watch Tulsa play ECU? No, I do not. I don't want to do that. Right. Uh, and and this year it was like Tuesdays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. If Cincinnati's not playing, I am locked in front of my TV watching a Big 12 game and being thoroughly entertained 97% of the time. Um, it's just such a competitive, fun, talented, well-coached, well-played basketball league that uh, I, I can get very used to 
uh, having this occupy November through March every year for me. I, I as think, opposed to what we had. Yeah, I think most fans, like people wouldn't even realize that you, Cincinnati goes from the Big East, which is like having a, a porterhouse every night uh, right. with lobster, surf, and turf, to uh, a, a meal they don't care about that they can get any time. And I'm not, I don't want to knock the American, but like the Big East, great basketball conference in its first incarnation great basketball conference now but for people who are used to that to go and, and have to teams that they just don't care about at all that's got to be tough to just to go through i don't know how great the big east now xavier is there yeah. so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> i am good friends with danny hurley though so i yeah. i pulled for the huskies did you he's like the biggest bengals fan on the planet I didn't know he that. loves the cincinnati bengals every time i text him he texts me back and then ends it with who day. Uh -huh. uh, but I digress. Yeah, it's it's so it's it's hard because you just don't care. Mm -hmm. I just don't care what Tulane does in basketball. I, I don't care. And now I do care about every team in the league. Uh, it, you know, there there's something even you look at Oklahoma State, like if they could have held that together, that was a really young, talented roster that I thought could be a lot better next year. They, they hit the reset button, but West Virginia had a ton of talent. Um, so everything is interesting as opposed to in the American, the problem was Cincinnati was interesting. Houston was interesting. Memphis was interesting. And after that, it was like you get, uh, we have a root canal scheduled every <laughs> Sunday and Thursday. Uh, make sure you're there, man. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's not good. And, so about <laughs> men's basketball, how, how do they get better? I know that they've already maybe dipped in the transfer portal. I saw a couple of notes on your timeline. Can they, can they acquire the talent they need to get even better? Yeah, I mean, the, the nice part is, guys, they're not far off. They're, they're looking like they are going to return pretty much their entire core from last year that lost – you know, they they won six games in conference play and had six others that they lost by one or two possessions. So they weren't far off last year and they were young. Uh, they just, ironically enough, you know how this stuff works, guys. Like four minutes before I came on with you, they got a transfer commitment out of the portal. Uh, Connor Hickman, who played for Bradley, uh, who had a very good year in the Missouri Valley, averaged 14 points uh, and shot, you know, 41, 42% from three which is what this team needs. They need some guys that can really stretch the floor to help with Jizzle James, who, who really came on at the end of the year and, and looks like he's going to be a star. Yeah. Uh, and Dan Skillings, who had a, you know, he was the leading scorer and had a very good year in the Big 12. Had a good game against Baylor, I think, as well. Um, so they've got a core. Now they need to supplement it. They've added Connor Hickman. I think they're in pretty good spot for a former top 50 big man uh, that just spent his freshman season at USC named Arrington Page um, in the transfer portal. And then you go out and you and you find kind of the best available uh, talent you can find. They have three spots open right now. You go find one more guy, and, and I think you've got a roster that's really – I don't know if it's ready to win the league. I'm not ready to, to take that leap. But I think it's ready to be even more competitive in the middle than it was a year ago. Chad, you just mentioned uh, Jizzle James. I was, I mean, it's like a pro football Hall of Fame town now, Cincinnati. I mean, you got the Kelseys there. You got <laughs> Sauce Gardner, who's obviously got a, a bright career going on right now. And then, then yeah. Edrin around to, to watch his son. What's it like having Edrin James roll around uh, Cincinnati a little bit? The funny thing is he's very quiet, very humble. Like as, as big as his personality is or his play on the field is, mm -hmm. He's not a guy that seeks a spotlight. They, they, they don't put him on the, the jumbotron. I mean, they have a little bit, but um, he just kind of likes to live his life. He's a Florida guy that likes to be out on the water and fishing. And, uh, you know, so it, it's very cool to have him around, obviously. As many guys like that as you can get, you, you sure. want to be around. But uh, I've been I've been pretty impressed that he's been pretty low-key. He, uh, he doesn't buy into his hype machine as much as a lot of guys in that situation do. Chad, thank you, man. Great to have, have you on the show. Great to see you uh, through via Zoom. Garrett, great job doing that. Chad Brendel knows Cincinnati Bearcat Athletics uh, from Cincinnati, of course, uh, with BearcatJournal.com. Love his passion. Love his knowledge.